Question, Juliet uh, Alspring. Hi, there. there you go. Thanks so much. So one of the first bills that Mitch McConnell said he said to you is one that would authorize the construction of the Houston and Excel pipeline. Right. When you've talked about this in the past, you've minimized the benefits and you've highlighted some of the risks associated with that project. I'm wondering if you could tell us both what you would do when faced with that bill, given the Republican majority that we'll, we'll have in both chambers, and also would you see as the benefits, and given the precipitous drop we've seen in oil prices recently, does that change the calculus? in terms of how it would contribute to climate change and whether you think it makes sense to go ahead with that project? Well, <laughs> I don't think I've minimized the benefits. I think I've described the benefits. If at issue in Keystone is not American oil. It is Canadian oil that is drawn out of tar sands in Canada. That oil currently is being shipped out through rail or trucks and it would save Canadian oil companies and the Canadian oil industry an enormous amount of money if they could simply pipe it all the way through the United States down to the Gulf. Once that oil gets to the Gulf and entering into the world market and it would be sold all around the world. So there's no, uh, I won't say no, there is very little impact, nominal impact, on U.S. gas prices, what the average American consumer cares about, uh, by having this pipeline come through. And sometimes the way this gets sold is, you know, let's get this oil and it's going to come here. And the implication is, is that that's going to oil uh, lower gas prices here in the United States. It's not. There's a global oil market. It's very good for Canadian oil companies. And it's good for the Canadian oil industry. Uh, but it's not going to be a huge benefit to U.S. consumers. It's not even going to be a nominal benefit to U.S. consumers. <clears throat> now, the construction of the pipeline itself will create probably a couple thousand jobs. Those are temporary jobs until the construction actually happens. There's probably some additional jobs that can be created in the refining process down in the Gulf. Um, those aren't, you know, completely insignificant. If, you know, it's just like any other project. Uh, but. Uh, when you consider what we could be doing uh, if we were rebuilding our roads and bridges around the country, something that Congress could authorize, uh, we could probably create hundreds of thousands of jobs or a million jobs. Um, so if, if that's the argument, there are a lot of more direct ways to create well-paying American construction jobs. And then with respect to the costs, all I've said is that I want to make sure that if, in fact, this project goes forward, that it's not adding to the problem of climate change, which I think is very serious and does impose serious costs on the American people. Um, some of them long term, but significant costs nonetheless. If we've got more flooding, more wildfires, more drought, there are direct economic impacts on that. And as we're now rebuilding after Sandy, for example, we're having to consider how do we uh, increase preparedness and how we structure uh, you know, uh, infrastructure and, and housing and so forth uh, along, uh, along the Jersey Shore. That's an example of the kind of costs that are imposed, and, and you can put uh, a dollar figure on it. So uh, in terms of process, You've got a Nebraska judge that's still determining whether or not the new path for this uh, pipeline is, uh, is appropriate. Once that is resolved, then the State Department will have all the information it needs to make its decision. Uh, but I've just tried to give this perspective because I think that there's been uh, this tendency to really hype this thing as some magic formula and uh, 
uh, to, to, to what ails the U.S. economy, and, and it's hard to see on paper where exactly uh, they're getting that information from. In terms of oil prices and how it impacts uh, the decision, I, I think that um, it won't have a significant impact, uh, except perhaps in the minds of folks when gas prices are lower, maybe they're more, uh, less susceptible to the argument that this is the answer to lowering gas prices. Uh, but it was never going to be the answer to lowering gas prices because uh, the oil that would be piped. Uh, the Keystone Pipeline would go into the world market, and that's what determines oil prices. In, in terms of Congress forcing your hand on this, is this something where you clearly say you're not going to let Congress force your hand on, this, on whether to approve or disapprove this bill? I'll see what they do. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take that up in the new year. All right.